Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mariet, also known as the Boerfrau. And in this little video, I decided to do a knit and chat video today. And we are going to talk a little bit about self-care. So um, before we start, um, I want to show you what I'm knitting on. Just want to get to the end of the row here. Right, so what am I working on? I'm making a little swatch um, with this Friere yarn that I've had for, I don't know, probably 15 years or something. Um, <clears throat> I have, if I remember correctly, I have 30 balls of these, of this specific, uh, specific colorway. And... Um, I'm still into the colors. I might not be into the yarn anymore that much, but I have a plan and I decided to cast on a little swatch and um, see if my plan can come to a reality. Anyway, so I'm going to knit on my swatch while I'm talking to you. I made some notes on what I want to say. So let's get into it. So, if you followed me here on YouTube, um, you would, would have heard me talking about um, making self-care a priority for me this year, um, 2023. So, what is self-care is the first thing. So, I actually looked it up and self-care is the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness. So what does that mean for me? So for me personally, um, it is the practice of looking after myself and prioritizing um, my own mental health and physical well-being. All right. So I also see it as living a stress-free or less stressed life. Um, or living in a less stressed environment at least. So a few things come to mind um, when I talk about self-care. So four of them is less stress, so a calm, a more calm environment, um, rested, feeling good, taking care of me first, because you cannot pour from an empty cup, and then fourth, be kind to myself and others. So how do I achieve that? So for me to achieve this part of the goal, I had to dig a little bit deeper into the way um, I do things, what type of things take up my time, um, and what can I do to make these things, uh, to get these things done in a more efficient way all right so there is quite a few things that I can think of that takes a lot of my time but let's just take an example one simple example so for instance making the podcast so making a podcast takes a lot of time um, it does not just happen so there is quite a few things in the process of making a podcast that takes up a lot of time. So I was looking at the podcasts. Obviously, I love doing the podcasts. Um, so I am definitely doing that. And then I thought, OK, so what is all of the processes that goes into making a podcast for me personally? And what of those processes can I maybe streamline or um, make do something else, follow another um, set of processes that can make this um, task go more efficiently. So one thing that was a big thing for me is especially making a thumbnail. So making a thumbnail, I'm not going to um, go into every single little step, but it took me about eight steps of which um, three of them was importing them into another editing software. 
So this took quite a while and I decided I can definitely streamline this process. So I went out and I bought myself a letter board and um, now my thumbnail process is only four things that I need to do. And for not any one of those four steps is opening another program. So um, I am still in the process of deciding what type of thumbnail I like best. But now I can just put my projects down, put the letterboard down, make sure it's on the right number, take the picture, make a screenshot, because YouTube does not allow um, thumbnail pictures to be more than two megabytes. So I take a screenshot of the picture that I took and I make sure that I cropped out the battery and all of those things on the screen and I'm ready to go. I don't have to open editing programs. I don't have to resize pictures. I don't have to crop anything. I don't have to edit some words on. It is just going much more easy. All right, so that is, that is some of the things that um, you can do to just look at what takes your time and try and see if there's anything that you can do to make this process a little bit more efficient um, and makes it go faster because if it's a little bit faster, it's sometimes more enjoyable to do as well. An example in my personal life will be um, trying to keep a cleaner space. So I do most of the cleaning around here because um, my husband would help me sometimes, but if he has loads of work to be done on his side, for instance, mowing the lawn, um, it is a huge lawn, so it takes quite a bit of time, but um, there is some of his tasks that he does and the other things are mine. So like cleaning mostly is my task, but if, um, depending on what's going on in our lives, um, if he doesn't have lots of pressing jobs and his things are done, he would help me again by maybe mopping the floors or whatever needs to be done. So um, that is how we do things around here. Um, we don't have any um, help. So it's just the two of us and we do everything around here. So I do believe that being organized and keeping a neat and tidy space is not a natural talent. It is a learned skill. Like some people just understand knitting or crochet easier than others. It's, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I used to be one of those people who would take the clean milk jug out of the dishwasher and put it on the counter because I will be needing that this afternoon. So why put it in the cupboard if I can just leave it on the counter and I can use it later? So at the end of last year, I realized that I will have to stop this bad habit of mine of not putting things away because then I just can just as well never put anything away because I'm going to need that later. And that is not healthy for me, especially to be in a very crowded space. I like things to be a little bit neater and a little bit more organized. So I had to adapt in this matter so i started to clean up after myself in such a way that i can walk away from an almost clean space if i cannot for whatever reason continue with the task i was busy with so as an example of this i'm going to mix my business and personal a little bit because i am running my business out of my personal space so for example, um, I would have an order and I need to bake three different types of cookies today. So um, I would start by getting the stuff ready. Um, with that, I mean like taking out the flour, make sure what measuring cups I need, etc, etc. And then I would mix up one of the three um, different types of dough that I need for the baking process. And then before I start to put the actual cookies on a baking sheet, I would clean up first. So while I'm busy making the dough, I would clean up. I would make sure that my dishwasher is empty and um, things that I know I'm going to need for the second batch. I will make sure that there's water in the sink. 
I will hand wash it, put it in the drying rack, so that the moment I'm finished with this batch, I can immediately start the next batch, so that everything is clean. So I would clean the mixer, I would put it on another cupboard, um, and I will start making the cookies. And the moment I'm done with this batch, I'll take the mixer, I'll put it back on the counter, and I will start gathering the rest of the supplies that I maybe didn't need in the previous um, batch of cookies. So for instance, I'm now in my second batch making chocolate chip cookies. I will go get the chocolate chips because that was not out for the vanilla cookies, for example. And I will keep repeating this process of cleaning up all the time while I'm making these cookies. Because it has happened before that I was busy with a batch of cookies. I was actually busy baking them. And I looked up and I saw that we had a felt fire. I saw lots of smoke and I had to drop everything immediately go out, phone my husband, get people to come help, fight the fire, and all of those things. So, it is a crisis. So, um, I have to be always prepared to drop whatever I'm doing because there can be a crisis. So, say for instance, in somebody else's life, it can be a child that got hurt that needs to go taken, uh, be taken to a doctor um, or to hospital or whatever the reason may be. Um, I try to clean up in such a way that if there's maybe a felt fire or whatever, I am going to be exhausted after that because I actually help and actually take something and fight the fire with everybody else. So it's not something that I just organize and I leave. So I'm going to be exhausted when I get back. And then I would like to not have a zinc full of dirty dishes that I still need to clean. So I can just come back bake the last few pans that's already been assembled, take the mixer, put it back in the cupboard where it is standing, cleaned already, and just put the flour away, and I'm done. So that is, to me, that is a form of self-care, because otherwise that things will just be still there tomorrow and everything will be dirty. All right, so anyway... That is my example for that. So um, these two types of things just makes a huge difference in my life. And it beats me that no one ever taught us this. Well, I wasn't taught this ever by anyone. My second point is rested and feeling good. Now, I know everybody is in different situations. I'm just sharing what works for me. So I have a lot of responsibilities as everybody else. Um, I mean, I'm looking after my household, cooking, cleaning, doing repair work on clothing, um, doing paperwork for my own business, running my own business, doing paperwork for my husband's business, um, you know, doing some gardening and so forth. So um, looking after animals, walk the dog, all of those types of things. So... One of the things that we seem to forget is that our body can only do so much and we do need to rest. I mean, you will not let your phone go out of battery power and die before you actually charge it. You will always make sure that it's charged. And why do we not do this for our bodies as well? Um, so we really need to change the idea that resting is being lazy we need to rest we really truly do need to rest um, so i'm also trying to get a good night's sleep i don't always get this right but i'm making it a priority to uh, prioritize rest um, if you for instance decide let's just take an example you usually go to bed at 12 o'clock at night and you decide you want to get at least one hour's more sleep per night, you want to go to bed at 11 o'clock. So I would decide to um, start getting ready for bed an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before I actually want to go to bed so that I can be prepared and rather sit a few minutes in bed um, before going to bed than running around like a mad person to try and get to bed and then you are so overstimulated that you cannot get to sleep. So, yeah, there is some things that can be done tomorrow. Even that project on your hook or needles 
can be finished tomorrow. You need to rest. <laughs> okay, so point three. Um, taking care of me first, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So, I have seen that prioritizing myself, things improved a lot um, around here. Um, how my mindset is and how I actually feel. Um, even how I react to certain situations. So, um, yeah, that, that makes quite a big difference. Being rested makes a huge difference. And uh, the world will not end if you take care, about, take care of yourself first. So, just a little example of this is when I went to work in an office, I would never ever take a lunch break. Like ever. Uh, I mean, your contract says you're entitled to an hour or half an hour's lunch break. I never ever took a lunch break and went and sat in my car or went outside of the office and go sat somewhere to have my lunch. Um, I remember some days coming home with my lunchbox still full, that I didn't have a bite to eat. And I told myself that, oh, it was so busy at work, didn't even have time for my lunch. But that's actually a little bit of nonsense. Um, I realized that um, that is really not healthy. And um, nobody actually expected this of me. I expected it of me, no one else. So even when I started working for myself and working from home, I had to speak to my boss which is me, <laughs> and she insists on me having a lunch break because then after my lunch break, I feel rested, I feel calm, and I'm ready to tackle the rest of the tasks on my list to do for the day with a fresh perspective and not feeling more drained than needs to be. So um, I try to... Um, set a timer for at least 30 minutes to an hour every day and take a lunch break. Um, go sit in the kitchen, brew myself a cup of coffee, get myself something to eat, sit down, watch a video, do something else than the job that I was just busy with. Sometimes I take my coffee and I go sit outside and even that makes me feel a little bit more rested. But I always set a timer because sometimes time can get away from you and before you see it, you have spent two hours. And you battle to get your work done. <laughs> so it's always a balance of things. Then the other thing as well is I try to stop working at night time. You have to stop working somewhere. So I try to not do work tasks at night. Sometimes it does happen that I have to maybe iron that skirt for tomorrow or whatever because maybe there will not be power when I get up and then I cannot iron the skirt. But then I just iron the one skirt, not the whole basket because that can be done tomorrow. So I make a point of it to just do what is needed and to sit down, relax, spend some time with my husband as well and to not work until right before I have to go to bed. All right, so point four of this discussion, well, I have only knitted this little bit. Um, <laughs> so to be kind to me is to not push myself beyond limits that I know that I have. For example, you should not commit yourself to doing something for someone if you know that you cannot do it. So, for example, I have a work deadline that needs to be done in 14 days. And I know that for this 14 days, I am going to have to work every minute of the day that I have as work time to get this deadline met. And an opportunity will come up and somebody will, will contact me and ask me to design a pattern for them. Um, but I have to um, say that I want to do this, obviously, agree. And I have to submit a proposal and some drawings and maybe a swatch um, in 10 days. So for this example, if I know that I already have another deadline, I will definitely have to say no to this opportunity 
no matter how great it will be, because it is not being kind to myself to know that I cannot do this and force myself to cope with maybe just three hours of sleep every night for the next five days. And I mean, I need rest. I need to get other things done as well. Um, there needs to be some cleaning, cooking, clean dishes, clean clothes. I need to sleep. I cannot work all day, every day. So in this instance, it will be a very great opportunity. But if you cannot do it, it's being kind to yourself to rather say no. Because if you don't, and you don't meet this deadline, you are not only being unkind to yourself, but also to the other party in this um, example, because they could have went on to the next person on the list and asked them for some help and maybe got all of the things done in time. So yes, it is not easy. I am trying very hard. And um, yeah, I had this thing as well in the past where I... Um, felt bad in saying no in making a garment for someone and it actually took me a year to complete the garment and in the beginning it was fine and after a while it it was not nice working on this thing so rather say no and not be unkind to yourself and to others so yes the other thing that i also wanted to say is um you don't always have to give a reason for your decision you do have a right to say no without giving your reasons i mean sometimes your reason is a personal reason and it's not something that you would like to share with others and that is okay too so being kind to myself is not trying to do everything for everybody else and also not trying to do everything on my to-do list it is okay if the 11th thing on my to-do list today did not get done but the other 10 did and i always try to do things um, in whatever is has got the highest priority so that if i need to i can drop the list and continue with it tomorrow and the world will not end the sun will still come up tomorrow morning All right, I think that is everything for today's video. Um, I have finished a few rows on my little swatch. And uh, yeah, I hope you will see this in some future videos. I think that is everything for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and feel free to drop some self-care ideas in the comments down below. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of my content. And I will see you in the next one. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.